did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making a southern classic easy dish. We're taking the easy road. We're going to make pork barbecue sandwiches with a creamy coleslaw. And then on the side, what goes better with that than cookies, we're going to make a cinnamon chocolate chip cookie. So, mm, delicious. Now, traditionally, barbecue takes hours and hours and hours and hours in a 250 degree oven or, you know, many hours on a low and slow grill. We're going to take a shortcut because we're going to use our slow cooker. This is one of those dishes you can put together and turn it on in the morning and when you come home, shred it up and we'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes and it's done. So what I have here now, I like like pork shoulder and that kind of thing, but I, I think sometimes it's a little fatty. So what I have here is about a three pound uh, pork loin. The, uh, you can see here just the very lean pork loin dish or pork loin. And I, um, we're gonna trim a little bit of the fat off. Now you wanna have a little bit, but I don't really want, I'm just using plastic gloves to keep the pork off my hands. Um, you don't really want all that in your dish. So if, if you've got this particular one, doesn't really have too awful much, but I'm gonna trim just a little bit of it off there. This is about a three pound roast. Um, you could use any kind of pork really. I, I probably wouldn't use tenderloin. It's just a little bit lean. Um, but you know, you could use pork shoulder. You could use any kind of cut of, of good pork that you wanted. I'm just choosing to use this. now. The easiest way to cut this up, we're gonna cut it into cubes, is to cut it into thirds with this big piece. And this knife is just not wanting to cooperate with me. So let me get a sharper knife. Much better. A dull knife, there's nothing worse in the kitchen than a dull knife. Cut it in thirds. And then just cut it in cubes gloves are getting in my way here. Cut it in about, I don't know, two inch cubes or so, and then put it in your crock pot. Just put it in the bottom of your crock pot, and we're going to layer in some ingredients, and we're going to turn it on, let it do its thing, and then we're going to eat. But I love pork. I love pork tenderloin. Use it all the time for a you know, variety of dishes. Um, I like pork chops. I like pork anything and I personally think everything tastes better with bacon in it so but you could use this same recipe and substitute chicken or beef you could use a beef brisket and it would be absolutely delicious now you can see down in there all I did was just lay them I take these gloves off my hands did not touch that raw meat so we're good to go let me put this back here all I did was just layer that in the bottom of my crock pot and let's get another clean knife here. I've got one small onion that I'm gonna add to the pork. This is an easy, easy, easy recipe. And like I said, you could substitute chicken, you could substitute a brisket or a lean, you know, some kind of a lean cut of beef. Um, you could mix it up however you want. If you don't eat pork, and some people don't, you know, substitute another thing. If you wanted to make this really quick, use a rotisserie chicken. One of my absolute favorite things in the grocery store are those delicious little rotisserie chickens that you can get at your grocery store. They are delicious. Matter of fact, I bought one last night and had it because I love them. And, and I, although I roast my own chickens, um, I, I just love those rotisserie ones. They're easy, quick, and you know, boom, dinner's done. Make some mashed potatoes and some steamed broccoli or something beside it, and there you go. You've got dinner ready. So I have about a three pound pork loin. Now I used pork loin that I trimmed of its excess fat, cut it in about two inch cubes, and then just one small onion that I just diced. 
And I have about two cups of my favorite barbecue sauce. You can make your own if you want to, but quite frankly, I like the bottled barbecue sauces. I think they're good and they're convenient. So I'm using my favorite, which is a mesquite type barbecue sauce, but you use whatever flavor barbecue sauce you like or blending. Put that over it. No need to add anything else. Put your lid on, plug it up. Now, if you wanna cook this slow, you can do it on low for about, I don't know, 10, 11 hours, or you can cook it on high for about four to six hours until the pork is just very, very tender and you know just falling apart. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna kind of shred it with some forks and make the traditional pulled pork barbecue just easier and leaner. Because the reason that I chose the pork loin is there still is a little bit of fat in there, but I think the pork shoulder is a very, very fatty cut of meat. And although I do like it, and when I'm grilling barbecue on the grill, I like the pork shoulder because the fat will drip away. But in this crock pot, the fat has nowhere to go, so it stays in the pot. So that's why I chose a leaner cut of pork. And so, but you, you use whatever you like in your house. Let's turn it on low. We'll get it over here and plug it up. Here we go. Get it over here, out of our way. Plug it up, put it on low, and we're gonna let it go for you know about 10 or 11 hours. And I've already got one ready for you, so don't worry, you don't have to wait that long. Alongside our barbecue, I wanna kinda show you one thing that I've already done. Now, I love coleslaw, absolutely love slaw of all kinds. I think a necessary component to a barbecue sandwich is coleslaw. But have you ever made slaw and then, you know, after you put it all together, it gets watery, your dressing gets real watery? That's because your cabbage is made with a lot of water. I found a little trick recently, and this is how I've been doing it, and oh my goodness, does it make a huge difference. Take your, now I like just the pre-shredded up, coleslaw mixture that you get in the grocery stores. If you want to shred your own cabbage, by all means, you could use one small head of cabbage, a little bit of carrot and red cabbage mixed in there, or you can just buy a bag of slaw mix, which is what I did. This is all about convenience today. Put your cabbage in a colander with your holes in there. Just put it in there, just like I have done. Take, I like kosher salt for this, but you could use regular table salt or kosher salt. If you're using kosher salt, you want about a tablespoon or so. If, you, if you're using table salt, which is the kind that you pour out of your salt shaker, you need half as much, um, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, well, a teaspoon and a half uh, of regular salt or a tablespoon of kosher salt. Just sprinkle it over top kind of stir it in a little bit, let it set for about 30 minutes. Now this has been resting for about 15 minutes and I'm gonna show you. Look in the bottom if you can. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the amount of water that has come out of that cabbage? Well, that would be mixed in with your dressing if you didn't let this drain. So we're gonna go to a break. I'm just gonna continue to let this coleslaw weep out all of its liquid and then our cabbage will be softer and our dressing won't get watered down. So this is just gonna hang out. I'm gonna take a quick break. When I come back, we are gonna make some cookies. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Chapter 31, verse 24 says, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait upon the Lord. You know, human nature 
is not to be patient and not to wait. We want it now, we want it quick, and we want it our way. But you know what? God's ways are not our ways. And oftentimes, we wait patiently for the Lord. And you know what? When we do that, He hears us and He answers us in His way. Patience is designed to mold and transform you into a long-suffering person that God can use. So next time you begin to get impatient, remember to wait upon the Lord and His way in your life. Now, our coleslaw mixture is just getting rid of its extra liquid. Our Pork barbecue is in the crock pot, so let's make some cookies. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees, and I have two baking sheets um, here lined with parchment paper. If you're using a non-stick baking sheet, you don't need to line it with parchment paper, but these particular baking sheets aren't non-stick. So for easy cleanup and easy removal, I like the non-stick or the parchment paper because you cannot, with cookies, you cannot butter the pan in most recipes. There's a few that you might can get away with that. But what happens if you butter the pan or you spray it like with a baking spray or kind of, that kind of thing, your cookie as it's baking will spread too much. So that's why I, I use parchment paper. You cannot, absolutely cannot, done it, tried it, trust me. Do not substitute wax paper for parchment paper. Not the same thing. It will melt the wax and ruin your food. You can't eat it. So don't substitute wax paper. Parchment paper is the way to go on lining for baking sheets. Love the stuff. Now, I have in this bowl two cups of all-purpose flour that I've just got in there. To that, I'm going to add uh, some baking powder and some salt. I use kosher. You can use whatever you want. I've got about half a teaspoon of baking powder and about a teaspoon of salt. I have a tablespoon of cinnamon because I like a lot of cinnamon, and I like fresh nutmeg. I don't like the pre-ground up nutmeg. So I have a nutmeg here. Let me move this in my, where I can get to it. Um, just a little nutmeg, one that, you know, this little thing lasts forever. There's a big difference in the flavor. So get fresh if you can. Just use your microplane that I hope everybody has in their kitchen. You don't need a special little grater. I want about half a teaspoon or so of nutmeg. This little nutmeg has made a lot of recipes and I'm still using it. So we got about half a teaspoon or so of nutmeg. Take a whisk and incorporate that together. You can if you want to run it through a sifter, but I find just a whisk truthfully does just as good. Just gets it all combined. The flowers today that we purchase in our grocery stores aren't like the flowers of 10 years ago that really had to be sifted. They're so airy and light now. So unless a recipe calls specifically for sifted flour, if you just take your whisk, you'll be fine. In my stand mixer, I'm going to use one and a half cups, which is three sticks of softened room temperature butter. I actually took this butter out of the refrigerator last night and left it on the counter overnight. It's perfectly fine to do that. I keep my butter on the counter, you know, for toast and things like that. But don't try this recipe with hard butter. Trust me, it won't work. You have to have room temperature butter. One and a half cups, which is three sticks of very soft butter. Mm, I love butter. To this, I've got four tablespoons of just an instant coffee. This gives a little bit of a, um, um, a coffee flavor to the cookie. And trust me, coffee makes chocolate taste more chocolatey. Don't understand the science behind that, but if you add just a little bit of instant coffee, and I, I don't drink this, I use it strictly for baking. I love coffee, I'm a major coffee drinker, but I have a certain kind I like. Um, but the powdered instant coffee is great for your baking purposes. I'm just using regular instant coffee. If you have espresso, ground espresso instant, you can use that. You can use any kind of instant coffee that you like. I have four tablespoons. Now I'm gonna cream that together with my butter. I'm gonna start it on low to kind of get that 
coffee incorporated in there in that butter. Now that butter is very, very soft. And I'll show you what it's gonna look like here in a minute. Once the coffee is incorporated, go ahead and turn your mixer up a little bit. Get it mixed in there. Then we're gonna add half a cup of packed brown sugar. I'm using dark brown sugar in this recipe, but you can use, if you don't have dark brown, you can use light brown, it'll be fine. Let's get that stirred in here just a little bit. Oh. Smells good already, I smell the coffee. Yum. Then I've got one cup of powdered sugar, confectioner's sugar. Add this about half at a time or else you will end up with powdered sugar all over you. Once it's almost incorporated, go ahead and add the rest of your sugar. Mmm, delicious. This is a very firm cookie dough. Now, let me show you before we add the flour. You see how that's just kind of, if they'll zoom in here, you see how that's just sort of all incorporated in there together and it's light and it's, it's fluffy and it's all mixed in together. That's what you want. Now, scrape down the sides of your bowl, always. If you don't have one of these stand mixers, you can do this recipe with your hand mixer. Just make sure that you, um, you know, mix with your mixer long enough to get that butter light and fluffy and completely incorporated with the coffee crystals before you add the flour. You want all of that butter to be completely encased with the other ingredients before you add the flour. Now, 